Hey guys, Lane with the Simple Passive Casual Podcast. Please leave an iTunes review because the more reviews we get, the more uh, better guests we can get. And we can also attract more people just like you guys. If you guys have any questions, always email me any questions you got. Lane at simplepassivecashflow.com. And make sure you sign up for that Hui Deal Pipeline Club, which is getting uh, pretty big these days. No, it's a free investor club where I filter investments and under, underwrite the numbers and partners myself. Unlike other investors' lists, uh, you guys have direct access to me. And no, I personally have skin in the game investing alongside you guys. This is a story about a dude named Lane. He moved to the mainland and bought one place to stay. And then one day he went and tried to rent them out. And then he became one real investor man. Today, got a good topic today. I got Gordon Newton, who is a expert in timeshares. He is a president and co-founder of the Newton Group. And he's going to talk a little bit about timeshares, why they're a bad investment, and what do you need to get out of it? So maybe you can send this out to uh, one of those wannabe investors out there to get them out of these, these bad deals. But how's it going, Gordon? Hey, good morning, Lane. Thanks for having me. Let's just talk about timeshares a little bit. And I, I've never bought one, but I just know that it's okay. a bad, bad deal. But I just can't put my finger on it. <laughs> What? Yeah, well, I you know, I mean, look, I think the the number one thing that uh, a lot of timeshare owners who who have purchased obviously have come to grips that it's at the end of their life cycle they find out most of them that it, that it wasn't a financial investment, and so you know, good for you for not uh, for not owning one. Obviously, you've probably been on vacation since then. You don't need to own a timeshare to go on vacation. So, good for you. Right. I mean, there's just all these slimy uh, tactics around it, right? They bring you in, they they give you some kind of hundred, two hundred dollar value thing, or like. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I don't want to paint everybody with a broad brush. I would say that it happens a lot. Uh, you know, a lot of them are four to six hour high pressure sales presentations, and you know, yeah, they'll you know lure you in with the promise of a free gift or helicopter ride or whatever it is, and make it worth your time to come in. Uh, but uh, you know, they're uh, they're banking on the fact that uh, they're they're good at what they do. They've they've mastered their craft and good for them. But you know, prepare for a four to six hour or high pressure sales presentation. Yeah. So for the good boys and girls out there who've always known that this is a bad investment and um, gone with their instincts and never gone to one of those uh, freebie meetings, what's a typical yeah. t- timeshare price? You know, ten grand to get a couple nights stay, or what's the kind of typical range? Well, the uh, the average uh, the average uh, timeshare was sold uh, last year was a little over twenty thousand dollars and that's for the mortgage that's that's for the right to use and that's the biggest thing guys this is a right to use product this is not a financial investment they'll even let you know you know kind of in a fun way it's an investment in your four hundred one v doesn't really exist very similar to four hundred one k but the only similarities are the you know the the four hundred one one is actually a financial investment the other is just they you know they play on words a uh, an investment in your vacation, uh, which is obviously not a financial investment. All right. So three things that really stick out in my mind that really burns me in, and I'll let you add in a few more why this is a bad investment. First of all, $20,000, $20, you know, that can go to buy a smaller turnkey rental that can cash flow mm-hmm. for $200 a month is a smaller rental at the very least, not mm-hmm. including mortgage pay down, tax benefits, or any appreciation you get. So that's already... You're missing out there. You're not getting a, right. this is cash out of pocket right off the bat. You're not getting a loan. And a lot of the times, the reason, whole reason they're investing in real estate is for the leverage. You're blocking out that long-term debt. The last thing that comes to mind is that there's no exit strategy on this stuff, right? I mean, a lot of times you can sell a rental property and, and get some appreciation or whatever, but this is no bueno, right? That's right. I mean, look, as, as far as the exits go, I mean, that's why we exist. I mean, we're new group transfers. We specialize in timeshare exit. And even finding the right exit strategy has proven to be difficult for these things, which is why I just wrote the Consumer's Guide to Timeshare Exit to kind of help uh, level the playing field between timeshare owner, you know, consumer and, uh, and business, whether it be the resort or timeshare exit company or an attorney promising to end your timeshare ownership. There, there needs to be a real education uh, on the back end as well, too. So, I mean, look, you're right. Uh, you're basically striking a match of twenty thousand dollars here, if if you buy, a, you know, a new timeshare. And a lot of folks love their timeshare, by the way, you know. Um, but they can get one where the mortgage is already paid off. If you really want to own a timeshare, there are a lot of happy timeshare owners out there. I would encourage you to find one 
on the secondary market, uh, the, the, the resale market, so you don't have to pay the $20,000. And you'll, you'll pick them up for free. If anybody yeah. wants one, then give me a call, right? And, I mean, <laughs> and I was yeah. asking a lot of my, um, my, my Hui members, they're usually a bunch of smart guys, and they were talking all about these secondary websites where you can go and buy uh, these timeshares from these suckers <laughs> and use well, them from time to time. Yeah, I mean, look, I wouldn't call them suckers, right? I mean, there's look, a lot of our clients, the, the, the presentations, nobody's immune, man. 19 or 90, baby boomer or millennial, nobody's immune to these presentations. And I'm telling you, I mean, we, we've even helped out a federal circuit court judge. Uh, a lot of attorneys come to us just say, hey, I don't want to deal with this thing anymore. Make it go away. I want the maintenance fees to stop. So I, I wouldn't call time for owners suckers. It's just, it's, it's a very difficult thing to sit through. Um, you know, many people went in there saying they're, they're not going to buy no matter what. And they bust out the fuzzy math calculator and things start looking pretty good. Uh, and before you know it, you've walked out scratching your head wondering what's happened. So, yeah, I mean, look, that, that's the one thing I tell people is you're not alone. If you bought a timeshare, it's okay. I wouldn't call you a sucker. There are many intelligent, smarter people than me that have purchased timeshares. Yeah. How, how are some of the ways that they kind of rub the funny math? What's kind of the well, you know, side of the pit? <laughs> the, 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 the folks who actually pay attention to it after, you know, you've been sitting in there for four hours because you want your free helicopter ride, uh, the, the folks that actually can stay committed to the numbers, they'll actually see the math uh, and how it is fuzzy and you can break it down. It's explained in many numerous ways. Uh, you know, they're selling points packages now versus deeded weeks. And uh, you really have to stay on your toes to make sure that the math is adding up. You know, the, the big thing I, was, I would let people know is you mentioned earlier, uh, you know, that $20,000, you just put that down, but many of them finance through the resort too, and they're paying egregious rates. I mean, you know, you might be like 12%. So at the end of the day, you're not paying 20,000, you're paying more like 30. So the, you, you got to be cautious when sitting down with these people at any time. When I was getting my first few rentals, I found networking at a local RAI club absolutely a waste of time. Most of the people you network with, especially in random networking events, will not lead to anything. A running joke amongst sophisticated investors is that the local real estate club is the worst place for us passive investors to find peers because it's just a bunch of broke people. That's why people are seeking real estate advice to get unbroke. Hashtag BP. For the same reason, I am turned off by the 10x Grant Cardone followers because they are really a ninja in disguise. No income, no job, no assets. In some cases, they have a scarcity mindset motivated individual willing to step over whoever they need so they are not broke anymore. For more networking tips, go to simplepassivecashflow.com backslash people. Since 2016, I've given hundreds, almost thousands of free calls to my podcast listeners and now you can chat with me, but you got to join the Hui Deal Pipeline Club. I do this to filter the right people into my circle. I'm always watching and taking notes. Tip. I give freely and generously to who, those who reciprocates and exhibits generosity. Some people are givers and other takers. I have left so much money on the table giving out free advice, contacts, and resources. This is the way I filter people who I want to work with in the future. Ultimately, I play the long game. The Mastermind Journey to Simple Passive Cashflow is a platform to find like-minded, curated, not broke people or jerks, and the best chance for a busy adult to meet lifelong friends, even when you have graduated from the program. For the price I'm offering for the networking alone, it's worth it. <clears throat> but wait! By the way, you get 27 weeks of organized content and bi-weekly semi-private coaching calls too. SimplePassiveCashflow.com backslash journey to learn more. Right. I, I will say that, you know, there is a small case where, you know, for some people buying a package like this kind of ensures that they go on vacation and, um, you know, it's, it's something mm -hmm. there that they can take advantage of whenever. And if they didn't have this, this timeshare package, they would just never go on vacation. And, and, and for a lot of my listeners, time is time and like, you know, doing important things like going on vacation is more important than money. So that, that's, yes. I get that. Yep. Right. And that's the investment in the 401v, right? You're making sure that every year you're going to go on vacation. The thing is, guys, you have to make sure that you could, you could still go on vacation without the financial commitment or without the burden of ownership. Um, but again, some of these work out well. A lot of our time owners, they were happy 
uh, for a number of years. And when they got to the end of their life cycle of ownership, they realized that there's no secondary market, no resale market for these. And they just want their maintenance fees to stop. You know, their, their mortgage is paid off. They've used it for 15 years happily. And they're just, they just need to walk away. All right. And I think the thing that burns me up so much is like the guys buying these timeshares that shouldn't, or the guys, you know, they're not investing in rental properties or, you know, other investments and they burn all the cash up with this bad investment. And, you know, why, why else yeah. do, I mean, you're saying it's the, it's the maintenance fees that are kind of eating people alive slowly throughout the life of the investment. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, I've been doing this for well over a decade and that, it, that remains to be the number one reason why people want out. Uh, it's a real problem for the resorts and for, obviously for the time owners. Maintenance fees are rising faster than the rate of inflation. I'll give you an example. In 2007, the uh, average maintenance fee was $575. Uh, 2017, 10 years later, uh, those numbers are going to come out officially on May 28th of this month. But uh, they're expected to be at around 1030 1040 That's the estimate, uh, over $1,000. So that's almost, you know, what, a 90 95% increase uh, in the last decade. And that's a per annual basis? That's yearly, yep. And some, some people will pay that. Um, you know, that's, that's your yearly uh, average. Some okay. people say, well, I pay monthly. Some people pay quarterly. But at the end of the day, that's the yearly average from those are numbers given from the American Resort Development Association. And then what, what happens if you just stop paying that to take it back or you do? Well, that's where the trouble begins. Yeah. I always caution people. The last thing you should do is just stop paying and walk away. You know, there's uh, there, there are, there are a couple of ways you can get some help. I always tell people, look, get educated first, download your free copy of the consumer's guide to time exit. You can, so you can understand how to vet time exit companies and, and, and attorneys, because in some cases you need an attorney. Uh, what we do here is we give a real consultation. Uh, we sit down with you. We understand, hey, uh, wh which option is better? It might just be a simple transfer of ownership, which, which can be a little less expensive and uh, a little quicker. And you have to provide pr protections for the time owner during that process. Or you may actually might need real legal counsel. And the other thing I caution folks is, is they, you know, these exit companies will say, hey, we have attorneys on staff. That really is dangerous marketing because people don't realize that that attorney doesn't represent them. Unless you have a letter of representation from that attorney saying that they are representing you, you don't have legal representation. You have a guy that represents the company that you hired to exit your timeshare and you have real risk there. So I think a lot of the listeners, you know, they may or may not have a timeshare, but I was kind of wanted to put this podcast topic out there to, so the listeners can share with their friends who have these timeshares. You know, I mean, a lot of times when you, when an investor goes through a loss, you go through this, you know, it's kind of a little bit shameful. And I'll say it's kind of like my uh, losing my 40 grand in my first uh, limited partner deal in my self-directed Roth IRA. Um, mm. You just kind of want the problem to be gone, right? Like you just want to play, pay a lawyer or whatever it costs to, to get rid of this problem. So maybe talk, take us through like a, the typical numbers. You know, somebody puts up 20 grand on a vacation rental. They've been doing it for a few years. They realize that they can't pay the thousand dollars a month, or it's just not worth it, and they want to unravel mm -hmm. the thing. They go, they go and download your book, but you know, they just time is more important than money. They're like, Gordon, just solve this for us. How much is it going to cost, and what are the typical amounts they expect to get back? Well, I can give you some ranges, right? Because there's there's a little over fifteen hundred resorts in the United States, and each resort represents an individual week or a points package. And, and I can tell you, every situation is unique. I've been doing this for all over a decade. There is no one step drop that says, hey, that timeshare, I can quote you this all day long and you're gonna be okay. You, you really need to sit down with somebody experienced in the timeshare exit industry. But uh, you know, I've seen most people, they'll, re, they'll, they'll see a return on investment for ending their timeshare anywhere between you know, three and five years. They begin to recoup uh, what they've paid an exit company to end their timeshare ownership. Um, you know, for those folks that actually have a mortgage, it can be a little more expensive because you're going to have to go the attorney route uh, in most cases uh, because those contracts are binding and the resorts don't like it when you don't want to pay anymore. If, if you're, the assumption is it's like a thousand dollars a year maintenance fees and that's what you're paying out of pocket, you're saying three to five years. So it's going to be about three to five grand of attorney's fees to kind of get rid of the problem. 
or for the transfer process. Attorney's fees can get a little bit higher. What we do here to actually protect our clients from just ongoing attorney fees, because you may have to litigate as well too. We actually cover, we, we have skin in the game. I heard you mention that in the very beginning. It's something that I actually mentioned in the consumer's guide. Whoever you hire to end your time share ownership, any good agreement, you're gonna have to align your goals between A and B, uh, between company and consumer. You wanna ensure that your goals are aligned. So. Whoever you ask to end your time for ownership, make sure they have skin in the game. If they're doing a transfer of ownership, make sure they become financially responsible for your timeshare until it's out of their name. So they have incentive to get the transfer done uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, if you're hiring an attorney, try and find an experienced time structure attorney uh, that'll charge you one flat fee uh, and that'll actually represent you because you don't want to poke the bear and then get into expensive litigation or not have an attorney representing you in court. And make sure you're not on the hook for hourly rates that can be, you know, that can get a little out of hand with these attorneys. So we actually charge one flat fee for the attorney service and we make sure that the attorney sends them a letter of representation. There, there's a lot that goes into it, Lane. I mean, you, you bring in jurisdiction issues and everything else. People need to get educated on this uh, timeshare exit industry, really. And that's why I encourage everybody to get that guide. It'll help you understand what you're up against. So they're going to pay five grand to get the attorney on board to represent them. Are they going to recoup any of the timeshare costs of 20 grand or is that kind of, it depends on your case. Um, you know, in, I mean in, that, that really is between the attorney and, in 8% yeah. of the cases, most cases, what would you say, you know, the number be most of them just get out. Most of them just want to end it and they don't want to go through the uh, time of litigation. Uh, and the risk, really. You know, there are cases that are lost, too. I mean, there is a well-documented case out of Florida where uh, uh, an attorney sued the resort and he lost and his clients had to go back and, and pay an extra $8,000 to the resort to cover attorney fees and everything else. So uh, somebody that wasn't really as prepared as what they should have been. You have to understand your exit strategy. So most of them just want to end their time share ownership. Uh, but if there's something, you know, egregious that the attorney finds that says, whoa, wait a minute. You know, they locked you in the room, they fed you alcohol, you, you couldn't leave. Hmm. Yeah, I got a problem with that. You know, so they might, uh, they might try and recoup some money in that case. But, oh, I see. Uh, you know, that's between you and your attorney. I'm not an attorney, but we make sure that we hire an experienced time sharks attorney that will represent our clients so that they can have that conversation. But their primary goal is to end their time share ownership. You know, so what's the deal? Why won't the resort take these, uh, these things back? Well, they don't have to. Right. I mean, you've got a contract that's written in perpetuity. You've got a fees paying member. Why would they want to take it back? Uh, they don't have to. Right. So they're not going to make it easy on you. You know, there's there's no need. Look, these the resorts, they don't have um, cancellation departments. They have retention departments. Right. So I caution people. There's recently been a, a flood of people saying, oh, contact your resort first. Contact your resort first. A few years ago. All that would do is just reaffirm the notion that they're not going to take it back. Now the resorts got, have gotten smarter and they've turned this into another sales opportunity. So I caution people. I think it's the last thing you should do. Uh, many of my clients come to us having been burnt a second time from the resort. I got an 83 year old man that was called the resort to cancel through their cancellation program, and they told them that uh, oh you got a you got a contracted uh, you got a deeded week. We need to change you to points, and then we can let you out. Oh, so he does that. <laughs> And they sold him another $48,000. So his grand total owning the resort is over $100,000. And uh, they called and they said, okay, I got my points. I'm ready to go. Well, you have to pay off your mortgage first before you can qualify. It's just, you know, look, yeah. is, that, is that the resort's rules? Probably not. But you, you incentivize a timeshare salesman with commission and they'll find a way. So I, I caution people. It's like I said in the beginning, nobody's immune to their tactics, man. Uh, you know, I don't care how many degrees you have. It's tough. Right, right. Yeah, you're right. It's not about the level of education as we've all seen. It's, it's yeah. about awareness. So what are some of the, uh, you know, a lot of the, the listeners are probably uh, probably going to forward this off to their uh, unsuspecting buddies who have time shares and think they're all cool, but, and, but they've been kind of <laughs> bored and they want to, they've been, uh, and these are the guys investing in rental properties and going into syndications and they want to, they want to take advantage of this uh, distress out here. How can they, what are some of these websites out there they can go to kind of buy some of these vacation packages? 
Yeah, I mean, look, I I would caution them, honestly. There are many sites out there. Look, uh, Craigslist and eBay, right? I would I would caution you, not that those are bad entities, but that is where a lot of people realize that there's opportunity. And what I mean by that, there's a lot of people go there and wind up getting scammed from those two places. It's it's not Craigslist or eBay's fault, but you know, you post something up there, people have pain, you know, the consumer's at risk. So I would make sure that you extremely vet anybody when you're getting a timeshare on the secondary market. You know, I tell people, look, if you want one from me, that's fine, but you're gonna get uh, you know, probably a half an hour to forty five minute of an education and you'll be told, you know, what the exit strategy is on the back end and you'll have it for free. Right. I mean, the, the value to these things, is, as you heard me say, is is zero. You know, it's just an investment in your vacation. There are plenty on the secondary market. You don't need to go buy one from the resort unless it's a brand new resort and there's none available on the secondary market. So a lot of these um, buying it on the on the resale market, the secondary market, you're, you're pretty much taking their their annual monthly payment away from them. Right. And that's why they're that's the main thing that they're distressed. It's kind of like you're instead yes. of buying like a positive stream of cash flow, you're kind of taking their negative stream of cash flow away from them. Of course, at a exactly, or it's, yeah, or I mean, it's look, like and that's or it's like you know on cars, people go into these silly leases that they can't afford, and you can go buy them from I think Lease Trader or different lights, mm-hmm. different sites like that. It's kind of the same thing then. Yeah, exactly. I mean, look, they, you, you don't have to, you know, pay for the mortgage when somebody's already paid for the right to use it. That's essentially what that mortgage is. And I know when I say mortgage, it's confusing, and that's probably the term they use for a reason. But, you know, it's not like a house mortgage. It's not like a real estate. You know, many of them are deeded. So you have the same pitfalls. If you stop making payment, they can actually put a, you know, damage your credit, put a lien on your real property. There's a lot of danger there. You have to understand the playing field. Right. Yeah. So after talking with you here and learning a little bit more, yeah, I wouldn't touch this stuff with a 10 foot pole. But what I would do, you know, if you go on Craigslist and eBay or, or find these guys who, you know, have their week, their week out of the year that they have to use, you can kind of work a deal out with them sort of like an Airbnb situation. And oh, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of times you, yeah. because you guys, these guys need money because it's a bad financial investment. They can't even fly to their timeshare to take advantage of it, which is messed up. Yeah. And those people really need to call me. You know, if you find yourself in that situation, if you haven't used your timeshare in the last, you know, two, three, five years, uh, you, you really need to end it. But yeah, it, to answer your question, you could absolutely, you know, negotiate some hot weeks with some of these timeshare owners that are distressed. The, the resorts are beautiful. The, the, the paper, the contracts associated with them are, uh, are toxic. Right. Right. Just don't buy the actual timeshare. <laughs> No, I, I wouldn't. If if you want a timeshare, and again, there's a lot of people out there listening say, I love my timeshare. In fact, I want another one. Take ownership of one that's already had the right to use for it, already paid off the mortgage. You know, if you want to take over somebody's maintenance fees, that's fine, but just absolutely understand what you're getting into. There might not be a cost to get into it on the front end, uh, but there'll be a cost to, to get it, to get out of it on the back end. So use it with the full knowledge of knowing, you know, I, I like to call that uh, instant vacation equity. You know, the resort's called a 401v. If you get a timeshare that's already paid off and you're paying the maintenance fees on it, I like to call that instant vacation equity. You're ahead of the game there. But just know that you're likely going to have to pay a fee to get out of it at the end of the day. Right, right. Okay, you have sort of that negative. It's like buying like a $1,000 house in Detroit. It costs $1,000, but it's going to cost you twenty five grand to like fix it up or destroy it to put anything useful on there. And you got to pay the taxes. Yeah, but... Yeah, but even then, that's real estate. And over time, you hold on to that thing long enough, something positive is going to happen, uh, even in Detroit. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, what, so um, kind of wrap things up. Why did you write this uh, consumer guide as a timeshare? Did you get burnt yourself? No, no. I've, I've been in the industry for all over a decade, and uh, it's like that uh, insurance commercial that I like. They say, I, you know, we, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. I've been in this industry long enough where I've seen, you know, every <laughs> – every story, uh, you know, I've, I've seen a lot. I, I shouldn't say ever because you know what, I'm still surprised every day by some of the things that comes across my desk. But I, I really wrote it to finally help level the playing field. Uh, as more people are getting into the timeshare exit industry because they realize there's pain and they think there's opportunity there, there are a lot of people that are just, you know, I call them the accidental con artists. They have the same result. They're hurting people. The consumer's guide actually levels the playing field so they can look out for things like, if all they say is, you know, we get you out of your money back, 
those contracts, the exit contracts, have no end date, just like the timeshares. So while they're quote unquote working your file, you might be still financially responsible for your timeshare. So if they don't get it done in time, you're going to have to pay another year's maintenance fees or special assessment or taxes. That financial commitment guarantee is something I have to look out for. People just don't know to ask that. Only someone like me would be able to shed some light on the industry. That and we have attorneys on staff. It's just marketing puffery. People just, you wouldn't realize that, oh my goodness, well, they said they had attorneys. And so I thought, you know, I was going to have an attorney work. If you don't have legal representation, you're not protected. Well, thanks for coming on, Gordon. You want to give your contact information for anybody to get a hold of you? Yeah, sure. Uh, They can check us out online at newtongrouptransfers.com or they can call us at 888-571-8047. And uh, I would encourage people to download their free copy of the Consumer's Guide uh, so they can help themselves get educated and understand the pitfalls in the industry. All right, guys. Well, thanks for uh, tuning in. Um, share this with a friend or uh, who has got a timeshare. <laughs> Bring them into the simple passive cash flow ecosystem. The bigger we grow this. Uh, remember, I always say, like, if share this now because when you're financially free, you're not going to have anybody to have midday lunch with. So uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. This website offers very general information concerning real estate for investment purposes. Every investor situation is unique. Always seek the services of licensed third-party appraisers and inspectors to verify the value and condition of any property you intend to purchase. Use the services of professional title and escrow companies and licensed tax, investment, and or legal advisor before relying on any information contained herein. Information is not guaranteed as in every investment there is risk. The content found here is just my opinion and things change and I reserve the right to change my mind. Above all else, do your own analysis and think for yourself because in the end, you are the only person who is going to look out for your best interests.